Good morning and welcome to the service of morning prayer for Wednesday the 3rd of May. It's good to be with you this morning here at Trinity. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah, the Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us worship. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 119, reading from verse 49 to 72. Remember your word to your servant, in which you have made me hope. This is my hope, comfort in my distress, that your promise gives me life. The arrogant utterly deride me, but I do not turn away from your law. When I think of your ordinances from of old, I take comfort, O Lord. Hot indignation seizes me because of the wicked, those who forsake your law. Your statutes have been my songs wherever I make my home. I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and keep your law. This blessing has fallen on me, for I have kept your precepts. The Lord is my portion. I promise to keep your words. I implore your favor with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. When I think of your ways, I turn my feet to your decrees. I hurry and do not delay to keep your commandments. Though the cord of the wicked ensnare me, I do not forget your law. At midnight I rise to praise you because of your righteous ordinances. I am a companion of all who fear you, of those who keep your precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of your steadfast love. Teach me your statutes. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good, ju good judgment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. Before I was humbled, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The arrogant smear me with lies, but with my whole heart I keep your precepts. Their hearts are thick like fat, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I was humbled, so that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from Colossians chapter 1, reading from verse 24 to chapter 2, verse 7. I am now rejoicing in my suffering for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its minister according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden through the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is who, he whom you proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present ourselves, everyone mature, in Christ. For this I toil and strive with all the energy that he powerfully inspires within me. For I want you to know how greatly I strive for you and for those in Laodicea and for all who have not seen me face to face. I want their hearts to be encouraged and united in love so that they may have all the riches of the assured understanding and have the knowledge of God's mystery, that is Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I am saying this so that no one may receive you with plausible arguments. For though I am absent in the body, yet I am with you in spirit, and I rejoice to see your orderly conduct and the firmness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Jesus Christ the Lord, continue to walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading for today is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 27 to 38. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, 
Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, But I say to you who are listening, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And if, if anyone who takes away your coat, do not hold even your shirt. Give to everyone who asks of you, and if anyone takes away what is yours, do not ask for it back again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those for whom you expect to receive a payment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive much again. Instead, love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for He Himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Paul, in writing to the church in Colossia, reminds them, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. In the sense, we choose to be, as when we choose to become a disciple, a learning follower of Jesus, then that initial choice has implications for our whole life long, that we will continue to live our lives in Him. A more literal translation of the Greek would be, in Him walk. The word walk is a verb, a doing word, addressed to all of us in the plural, who choose to become followers of Jesus, and is expressed as an immediate command requiring action now. It is not something that's meant to be put off until things resolve themselves or when we are in a better place in life. The point is that following, being a follower of Jesus means that we are always an active follower, walking where he leads constantly. Paul then uses two seemingly contradictory images, one organic and downward, and the other structural and upwardly focused. To be rooted in something literally means to be embedded in it as our life source that feeds our growth, like a plant in soil that is deeply rooted in the earth that feeds it. To be built up is something carries with it the sense of contained upward and outward expansion. The two images combined give a picture of a discipleship as something active and ongoing where we're constantly digging roots deep and deeper into Christ while at the same time expansively growing out to become something more than we are. The end result is where we become established in the faith in a way that means our trust in Christ is resilient and firm even in the midst of struggles and difficulties, suffering and sacrifice. Nice people are good to those who agree with them and get, they get along with. Nice people are generous and giving with those who they see as their own. Nice people bless and pray for those who they see as belonging. But followers of Jesus are meant to be loving to those who call themselves enemies, are meant to be good and generous to those who hate them and take advantage of them, are meant to, to bless and pray for those who are abusive and treat them like an object. Why? Because they're learning followers of Jesus and they ask that basic question, how can I see this person as God sees them? How can I treat this person as God treats them? In the Sermon on the Plain in Luke's Gospel, Jesus reminds the crowd that God is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked, and that to the children of God we're required to be merciful. Is this easy? No. Is this automatic? Hardly. Is it a choice? Yes. Is it possible? Yes. 
As followers of Jesus, we do not get a choice about who we love, who we do good to, who we, let, we, we bless or pray for, who we lend to, or who we show mercy to. We're compelled as Jesus, followers of Jesus to love, to do good toward, to pray for, and to bless, and to lend to, and be merciful towards even those who don't deserve it, and in fact, might even mean us harm. Why? Because in our baptism we choose to follow Jesus, both in his passion and in his resurrection, both in his suffering and in his glory, both in his response to conflict and his response through valuing, affirming, and praising. That is tangible, what it means to be rooted and built up in him. That is what it means to walk in him, in that active, continuous sense. The key to it is to recognize that while there are days where we will pray with a psalmist that God would destroy the wicked and make them pay for the wrong they have done, we need to remind ourselves that God makes the sun shine and the rain fall on the wicked and, and the unjust, as much as God does on the good and the just. Because God is merciful to who God will be merciful, and that being loving, showing goodness, praying for and blessing, and being generous to those who call themselves enemies is a choice. It is a choice about following. And yes, it takes time and the work of God within us, and that's the point. A disciple is not somebody who does these things because they're easy, but does them because they're hard. A disciple is not somebody who does these things because they're automatic, but because in the struggle to do these things, we find that they're only possible because we become rooted, built up, and established in Christ. A disciple is not somebody who does these things because they're a breeze and a leisurely stroll, but because they require walking in somebody else's footsteps who has gone ahead of us and model what it means for us to live our lives in a way that makes this possible. Pray God that during this Easter season we may live the resurrected life of love as followers of Jesus, even in the midst of our own death, our own passion, and our own suffering. Amen. We affirm our faith together in Hero Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all of your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. This morning for our intercessions, we're going to use Litany 15, the Litany for Easter. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. We pray that our risen Saviour may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. We pray that as we walk in the footsteps of Jesus, we may learn to love and show compassion, mercy and grace, as Christ would. We pray for isolated and persecuted churches, that they may find a fresh strength in the Easter Gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. This morning we pray particularly for the life of the church in countries where persecution is so prevalent and where the church struggles to exist. That we would be companions to them in offering them encouragement and faith. We pray that God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. This morning we pray particularly for Bishop Andrew and Bishop Rusilla, our area bishop. We pray that God may provide for those who lack food, work or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. We pray for the, the ministries that we house here at Trinity, that care for the poor and those in need. We think particularly of our breakfast program. We pray for the agencies that we partner with, that God may use us to bring blessing. We pray that by God's power, wars and famines may cease through all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. 
We pray for those places where there is conflict. And this morning we pray particularly for the country of the Sudan. We pray for a peaceful end to that conflict. We pray that God may reveal the light of God's presence to the sick, the weak and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. We pray for those on our parish prayer list and those who have requested prayers of us today. We pray for those in hospital. We pray for those who mourn. God of grace, grant them comfort today. We pray that God may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon God's people, that we may be a faithful witness to Christ's resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. O God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do your will, and work in us that which is well-pleasing in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just a reminder that every Friday we gather um, at 11 o'clock um, to do a course called Living the Questions. We have conversations about the nature of our faith. If the intention is we watch a, a short video series and then have open conversation on the topic of that day. And also a reminder that on May the 10th we have our Fellowship Wednesday. Um, we start with a service here at 12.15, um, a communion service, and then from 1.30 to 3 p.m. Um, we have gathered fellowship together. And then um, from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock, we cook a meal, and 5 to 6, we eat it together with those who've joined us for that meal. Just a note that this will be the last Fellowship Wednesday until the fall, as we have a break over the summer months. And then just a reminder that we have an outdoor service for those who, who uh, might be immune compromised, um, and that's on the second and the fourth Sunday of every month at 11.30 um, on the hill. It's a service, a short service of morning prayer um, with a distribution of reserved sacrament. And the reminder that our next woman's breakfast will be May the 17th at 8.30 a.m. and uh, the venue is to be confirmed. I gather there will be a change of venue but we'll keep you posted on that. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.